You know, my, my mother and I have been going through the Die Hard series. I'll go over there and bring movies over. Mm -hmm. and uh, We watched the first one a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> figure next time I go over, we'll watch the second one and just work our way up to Live Free or Die, die Hard. hard. To my, for my money, that first one still packs a wallop. You know, I mean, granted, it's only been, I mean, it's that, not that old, really, you know, 20 years. Only 20 years 20 this year. Years, you know, not that old. <laughs> More than half of our life <laughs> ago. But, uh, I don't know. Just, you know, and when it came out, it was like, I don't know, you know, it was kind of like a breath of fresh air as far as action movies, you know. I mean, we were, we were used to seeing. I always thought that one kind of paved the way for. <clears throat> How action I think films it after it kind of changed things. For yeah, a while, it kind of became you know, a different um, story when they made horror. I mean, uh, action films. Right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, up to that point, it was kind of like, you know, Arnold or you know, guys that kickboxing masters or yeah. you know, just muscle bound um, noodle heads. You know, I, I don't know. You know, it just, I don't know. It just, it kind of, it kind of set the tone. I think for like a your kind of average, but real, was, real guy. You know. But it was intelligently done and not thrown together yeah. like a movie like Cobra or well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, something yeah. Van Damme did yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the kind Steven of stuff Seagal we were, had done that's the out the lunch that's or the kind of stuff above the jaw <laughs> or, uh, you know, Martin yeah. for Breath. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Bruce Willis, I mean, obviously we knew from, you know, Moonlighting, Moonlighting. you know. And, and that was it. <laughs> I still... I like Blind Date. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. I have a copy of that movie from. And years I thought ago. Sunset it was, was kind of. Funny. Funny. I thought Sunset was good too. You know, I, I mean, it was decent. Not great, you know, but I mean, not rolling the floor. Well, yeah, James, James Garner. James Garner was a smart Alec, <laughs> private cowboy. It's more like wider. Wider, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I just you know, it was just great. You know, here comes a, you know, guy. I mean, average guy. You know, shoved into. An extraordinary situation, situation you know, yes. and instead of, you know, acting like, Ooh, you know, I mean, he acts like a real guy, you know, he's a little scared, you know, well, let's little, see. I mean, we just <laughs> cast Arnold Schwarzenegger as John McClane for a second, he's in, he's in Holly's bathroom or whatever in his wife beater shirt, barefoot. First of all, he, instead of him like beating himself up over like arguing with his wife, he'd be in the mirror going, <laughs> You're so handsome. Right? But then you hear the gunshots outside, you'd be like, Oh, I'm going to kick ass now. <laughs> and, he'd, and he'd break out a service revolver and he'd go out there and just start plugging people. <laughs> and about 20 shots after like he's blown away, right. he's still standing. Right. And the movie's over. And he's yeah, killed everybody. He's killed everybody. <laughs> There's no hostage situation. There's no Al Powell. There's, no, there's, no, there's no Al Powell. There's no uh, annoying uh, Dwayne T. Robinson. Right. No, no stupid FBI guys. And that's, what, well, and that's what I want to say about the film. Action all the way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure, it takes time to get yeah, set up. Gets got, there, but set I mean, the, every movie Jesus, the has to set up the characters I mean, and everything and all that stuff and who's who. And we find out that McLean's and his wife's estranged, blah, 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 yeah. and so forth. I mean, actually, decent plot gives you. Gives we you find out that Ellis is a cokehead. Yeah, yeah. So that's important. <laughs> because later he can't get any real coke in his nose. He's got to drink a Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah, you you even hear it fizzing on McLean's radios. You ever notice that? No. You hear yeah. You hear like he's bullshitting, and you're right, and then it cuts to McLean. Yeah, right, you John, you just you just have to hold this thing out, you know, capiche and all that stuff. And he's holding this radio, and you just hear like. Of it fizzling through the damn radio, never, and I'm like, kudos to the continuity person on that, because I would have been like, hey, I don't hear any fizzing on the other end. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's, true. that's, a, good, that's a, good, a good observation, you know. But um, apart from the action, the realism of the character, just a, just an off-duty cop who's like stuck in this, stuck in a place he's not even been before, trying to like survive and get, you know, use his scruples to get right, his way through the same, that. And at the same time, you know, reflecting on, you know, the, the, it I always found it interesting, you know, the way the, the thing with the wife still keeps popping up, you know, even though all, you know, you're getting shot at, shit's getting blown up, blah, 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 you know, 
you know, and all this stuff going around. And it's well, he's worried about her because right. she's in the field right. of, you know, right. she's but a ground zero when a terrorist. But are. that's kind of, a, that's a nice foundation to build all this extraordinary stuff around. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And just, um, and just, uh, I don't know, just, you know, I mean, well, you know, we don't have to rehash, you know, but we see it, you know, goosebumps coming out of the theater. It was like we'd never seen a hey, an action movie before. We saw it at the Patterson yeah. Theater, which was the small cheapo theater once it's on its way out of the theater. No surround sound. The closest, closest anything. theater we, we could walk to. And the closest seats to the screen. <laughs> which wasn't like right in front of it, right? I liked yeah. about that. They, they the like tear like the first twenty rows out or something. Fifteen rows. The first couple like ended up not having chairs. The chairs there was not, not, not the seats. It was just the, was just the, the frame, frame of the chair. <laughs> yeah. And then I got tired of stepping in like sticky yeah, shit, stuff. you know. Yeah, but anyway, it was a cheap little place that got worse. But when we used to go there, I remember we were in the very, very front row, and you had like this whole space before you got to the screen. So you can sit in the front row, and it's not like it's right on top right. of you. So right. I really like that. Right. I drank that huge ass Sprite, and my adrenaline was going so much through like all of all that movie had me on edge. I didn't. I remember going into it. We were like, yeah, what's the? I was like, you, yeah, what's yeah, the hard about? I didn't. And I you're didn't, like, it's some action movie. He's trapped in this building. There's terrorists. I'm I like, didn't know. Right, I, let's go see I was it. kind of surprised at myself because you, you know, weren't familiar with it. I either. was not. I was not that familiar with it. I read a little bit about it. I know. I, I remember. I remember reading at the time. You know, it, Bruce Willis did Blonde Date. Not good reviews. No. He did Sunset. Not good reviews. And I'm like. You know, I like this guy from Moonlighting. You know, he's funny. He's a give him a role. He's a decent, can, act, decent can, actor. Uh, you keep you, you want to see guys you like hit something good. You know, and this got good reviews. You know, um, so but still, you know, it's kind of like well, you know, it wasn't something I was itching to run out to see. I didn't really know that much about it. Right. And and to be honest, I I know him from Moonlighting, but you know, it's like an action movie. I I, I couldn't really connect. You know. Goofball David Addison yeah, and yeah, yeah. A, and a guy running around shooting terrorists in a building, I, I, it didn't connect to me, you know. So well, that was the thing. Is to this day he thanks Sybil Shepherd for getting pregnant, because that postponed Moonlighting well, shoot for a while allowed him and allowed him to do that film. Yeah. And from what I've read, I think he was filming. I think they were picking up filming while he was doing Die Hard. He would he would film. Um, that's why the movie primarily takes place at night. At night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he was filming Moonlighting during the day and then going at night to, to film Die Hard or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what I've read. Mm -hmm. I've read different stories. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I think the characters are interesting. You know, you got Al Powell, who's kind of like his connection outside right. the building. He's, right. his, he's his eyes outside the building. You got the inept uh, captain of police, you know, whatever, Dwayne <laughs> T. Robinson. You got the idiot FBI Bates. guy. Bates. A lot of critics didn't like Die Hard on the merit that the fact that the the, the, the cops were dumb. Well, you put that, and that kind of the started, FBI that was kind dumb. of started something too, because for a while there, you go to action movies where the main guy. Because in reality, the, the, the main they are guy, dumb. The main, but the main guy, you know, he's got it, and all the cops were like made. Every, anybody under that guy was like made stupid. You know, it's just so, t I mean, it was for, like, I remember a number of years, you go to any kind of action film, the main guy knew everything that was going on, everybody else was a dumb fuck that didn't know anything, didn't exactly. know they one and their gun from the other. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, great, you know, great characters, great villain, Alan Rickman, a terrific actor, you know, um, done a lot of good lot, I, you know what? since then. You that, know? that would have been a nice movie for him to get a Best Supporting Oscar. I, I think that performance was Oscar worthy. But that's the world for yeah. me. That's the world of Greenfield. Right. Yeah. Hell, I think, you know, you know, I thought Daniel Craig should have gotten an Oscar for Kissing <laughs> Around. You don't see that kind of stuff. I would have liked to see seen Kermit get an Oscar for The Great Muppet Team. <laughs> Not going to happen. Or any Muppet film for that matter. He sings he sings a rainbow connection on a banjo. Hi ho, Kermit the Infro. Kermit the Infro here. I'm going to sing rainbow connection. Hey, snip the string like banjo, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. Sorry. That's all right. You're a little but, <laughs> No, so, all right, so, a uh, great movie. Great movie. Everybody loves it. Where do you go from there? Well, wait a minute. Before we go to Die Hard 2, okay. I just I just got to I want to wrap right, up on right, the first okay. one with just a few things. It's my standout scenes in it. The bare feet on the glass always makes me my back tingle. Yeah. 
I used to always wonder, did he run across the glass or just hop on the one foot across? Because his only one foot is cut up, cut up that really well. Obviously, he had to hop on the one foot. I, I don't know. Because he's dragging the one foot and it's gushing blood and he's right. pulling glass out of it. But when you saw that floor before he ran, I'm like, oh yeah, how's he going to get out of this? And then when the bomb comes flying down the floor, I'm like, oh yeah, he's going to blow up. I, won, I, I, I wonder if, if he <laughs> did run, but... It just happened by luck that maybe that one, tippy toe that one, la one large piece just, you know what I mean, right in, because it was like one big piece, wasn't it? There was more. No, there was more. I mean, I'm he, sure he there was, was there pulling lots of glass. Out. Oh yeah, he yeah, had a huge shark. There was yeah, a huge, huge, yeah. huge ass piece in there. But I um, like that scene in, in there because at that point, because he's so damaged physically, yeah, yeah, he's been shot at, he's been beaten up, right? He's got his feet cut up now; he can barely walk. And he's like out of breath. He's so tired, and and and, he, and he's just he's lamenting to pal. And that's what's interesting. He's he's physically beaten, and it leads right into like an emotional. Tell my let, wife. Let me, let's, I'm em sorry. Let's empty myself because I really don't have that. Much. I don't think I'm. I don't have that much life. left in here. In yes, me, you know, I, lo yeah. I love that. Yeah, that was I mean, great. And great. then and then and then the second part to finish off on the first movie was I love when he's up on the roof and he says, "Please God, don't let me die." <laughs> yeah. Come on. Roger Moore's Jamie Foxx. The Bond. room it up there going, the roof thing. Mm, the roof thing. hair when they got messed up. The whole roof thing alone, you know? I mean, you hit that point, and it's like, you got to imagine your adrenaline's running as much as his character is. Sure. Because it's just kind of like, bam, 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 let's get up to the roof. Here comes the stupid FBI guys. They're fucking shooting at you. i got to get out of here before they blow the goddamn roof up. Hose, you know, real guy. How the hell did I get into this? <laughs> we left. We left. Um, seeing Die Hard, and I had so much Sprite in me, I couldn't even make it home. I had to piss behind a tree in the park, we and that tree grew ten feet. feet. Uh, my address, I was walking home the whole time, like I have got to piss behind a tree. I am not going to make it. This movie affected me that much. Whoa. <laughs> so all right, enough on Die Hard. Okay. Die Hard. So two. where do you go from there? You, it makes enough money, you know there's going to be a sequel. And I know you want to talk about the trailer we saw. Well, we don't have to get into it, but, but I mean... It sets you up that the same thing can happen to the same it, guy and twice. That's, and and, that, and, it, and it, made, it made sense. It was it brilliant. Works. That's it the best way to go. You play to the disbelief that this guy is going to get... The same guy is going to get stuck in a close to... not a, and, it, and thank God he didn't... You know, Let's just not just... Oh, let's just shove him in another building. Thank you for not doing that. Okay, but he's got more. Let's work put with. you in some in some place where you're essentially he's trapped. still a little confined, trapped, but he's got more. You got more room to work more, with, but right. the situation itself traps you. Mm -hmm. Your wife's stuck on a plane, you know, and you. What are you gonna do? You're John McClane. You're gonna get her out of this, and if it means taking on these crazy uh, drug, uh, you know, funded. <laughs> uh, mercenaries, you know, or whatever, then that's what you're going to do, you know? But I just, it was great. Let's play to the disbelief that, you know, Jesus Christ, I'm John McClane, I'm getting stuck in the same shit again, you know, i got to deal with all these assholes. And somebody's got to do Somebody's it. shooting at me, something's blowing up. <laughs> they always said that McClane's the reluctant hero. He doesn't want to be doing this shit, yeah, but when it comes yeah. to his wife or his family, right. or he's pushed into it for some measure you of reason, what are you going to do? You're going to sit on the side? Yeah, he has no choice. When his wife's right. up on the plane or whatever, right. I thought it was fantastically written. A lot of people think Die Hard 2 is the weakest of the series. No two, sometimes the debate's 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. Since 4 came out, it's up in the air for all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody still seems to agree the first one's the consummate classic. Well, yeah. The second one, I, I think for a sequel, a follow-up... Great. To me, it's the Terminator 2 of the first two movies. They're both yeah. brilliant in their own ways. Yeah. The second one put more out there, but you still can't love it. You know, you still got to... I don't know. Mm. It's hard to explain. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th that's what I... I, I mean, it's, it's a different movie that... that it's different. It tries to do the first more. one, and it does succeed in a lot of levels. Yeah. But, you know, you, you do in your heart still grab to the first one, yeah. you know. Yeah. I just I thought it was brilliantly written. The characters are great. I can't say enough. The best part of the movie is a naked Colonel Stewart. <laughs> You're killing me. No, what I mean, no, what I mean. Well, I mean, it is a little, it is a little jarring. I mean, well, no, you're, you're doing all the shit with McLean. We're getting to know him again right. after where, where blah, he's blah, stuck, blah, right? Know, then you know. see these hands come out, right? And the music's like, da -da -da, <laughs> right? And he's doing his yoga shit, and you see his bare ass, and I'm thinking Michael Kamen really thought hard on this score. 
You got some intense shit here for a fucking guy whose ass is glistening in the camera. <laughs> And the key is, you're not supposed to be watching him, you're supposed to be watching the news reporter yeah. about General Esperanza yeah. coming in. I'm looking at Colonel Stewart's ass, <laughs> and I'm not even gay. Now that's good filmmaking, when you can get into a guy's ass. And the music that goes with it, to me that's what goes hand in yeah. hand. Michael Kamen, God bless you. Yeah, great, great guy. I mean, you know, anyway. score one. But no, it's great, it's films. great. Yeah. I think it's great. My, for me, the best shot of the movie, stuck in a plane cockpit. Let's throw all our fucking grenades uh, yeah. in there. Boom. I mean, it, just just on the merit alone that it is a shot from above the plane. At the ejector seat. And his expression as he's spinning. And it just goes, oh, and then they... Shit. Oh, shit! <laughs> and what's funny is that is the shot of the And the, the terror's reaction is, you lucky fuck. <laughs> they, could, they could have been like, oh, God. <laughs> They're just like, shit, lucky bastard. You know, well, we'll get him next time. Yeah, we'll get him next time. <laughs> We'll probably have like ten more chances uh, to kill him in this movie. Yeah, so well, we can we can touch on the trip. We'll do we'll do a whole thing on about trailers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we <laughs> best trailers, worst trailer. <laughs> um, okay, let's move on. To Die Hard one. with a Vengeance. Yes. Um, All right. Uh, how many? What was it? Nineteen ninety-five. Five, 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 five years later. Five years later. McLean now he's got even more to work with. He's got the whole city of New York that he's got to run around and do things. Yeah. Nobody, I guess, saw that this is Hans Gruber's brother. Okay, I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah. Blowing up stuff, threatening the school. Great characters. He's back in New York. I, yeah. I like the angle that, you know, I, I guess um, Bonnie Bedelia didn't want to come back in the role and play his wife again, so they had to write her out and do it mm -hmm. in some way where, okay, how do you have to Die Hard 2 in it? Right. So right. not only do we have him doing like the in, uh, incredible, but we give him a hangover on top of it. Right. Well, and he's got to deal with this insufferable well, <laughs> condition yeah, and, I, I, and I, still be the top cop of the force. You know what I think it is? I think at that point it it moved away. It started. It made the move away from. It's not just about John McClane stuck in a building in an airport. It's about John McClane. You know, we've come. We're 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 more with just. The character now, you know, he doesn't have to be stuck somewhere. He's in whatever situation, and he's going to react to that. However, he's pushed or pulled or, you know, whatever. So here he is. We're in New York City, you know, big freaking city. I've never all been the there, places, but, and he ran yeah, all over. The and place. he's all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. But um, and a wife beater with a with, with a his shirt right, over. Right, gotta have his wife beater. <laughs> right. Um. I like, I, you know, I, my, my only thing about With a Vengeance is my feeling on it has kind of waned over the years. Um, I, I'm, I'm okay with it up to a point, and then it kind of like, there's like that part where it's, it, it's like they don't know what they want to do with him. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, we're at the stadium. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's all over the place until we kind of focus back into... The ship, or you know, we kind of get back and get him back to Jeremy Irons, or, or at that point, it's kind of, and, and I guess that's kind of good that was a deterrent. Though I understood that. And I think mm -hmm. we talked about this once. I I was like, yeah, it seems like a pointless scene to send them to the Yankee Stadium. Yeah. But what it was was it was a way for McLean to send um, oh, Zeus, Zeus out yeah, there, Samuel Jackson. so he could go on with the one thing he was doing. Yeah. Which was going into the aqueduct. The aqueduct and you know, they, right. they basically they needed a way to write them apart for a little yeah. while, so McLean could do his thing. So yeah. he's like, okay, you go to Yankee Stadium. Yeah, yeah while well, Goose Chase. And you're right, it's obviously it's a deterrent. A deterrent. Obviously. Yeah. And it's just, it just, it, it kind of loses me there for a little bit. Right. And know? I mean, it's fine. Okay. And I, yeah, as years go by, yeah, it's, it's obviously a little yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. But and they're like, well, what should we do? You know, kill him or not? You know, right. no, follow him. Right. Well. That's what leads them back to McLean is when those two get back together again, those guys have been following, and then we're back to the action, right. and they're together right. again, and then, you know, okay, yeah. fine, you know, it's just a little segue, yeah. but, you know, the aqueduct scene is really cool. Yeah, that's true. So I go with that. So, I mean, I'm able to tolerate that little Yankee Stadium scene just, yeah. just until we bring the yeah. characters back together. And for know. me, I, I thought the, the thing was, with me, my problem with it is that it takes, like, them forever to rob this vault. Yeah. And I got I mean, Johnny March, Johnny comes marching mm -hmm. home. Great, you know, I love it. And that's kind of, you know, but that's, that's, that's just drag. That's kind of where that's where it kind of starts losing me though. Once the subway thing blows, I'm great through the subway. The whole thing, 
the, the cab to the subway. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you yeah, know, yeah, I'm, 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 you got me, you got me, you know. I'm my seatbelt's on. Boom, let's go. And then once they get to the vault thing, it's kind of like, it, things start kind of slowing down. You know, we go to the stadium. It's we're kind of all over the place. The aqueduct picks up things up a little bit, mm -hmm. and it's just, I don't know. It's just kind of like two scattered. And, and then you, you know? got to go back to them and trying to defuse the bomb at the school. They're still looking for the bomb. Right. Which I mean, there's there's a lot of people you know, doing a lot and, of things. And my merit to that, all that is, it's it's interesting that they actually threw some cops in there that were not idiots. You know, you get to see other. Apparently, the cops in New York City are better than ones in LA. Right? <laughs> we just right. John McTiernan is just trying to make a point. McTiernan is probably from New York City. New York. Yeah. He's probably been to LA and thought well, these guys are a bunch of assholes yeah. out here. No, but, I don't but, know. but you know, I mean, it, it has its merit. I like that the fact that they show other people. You know, I liked Cobb. I liked, um, you know, what's his name, Graham Greene, the Indian, the cop, uh, Ricky, the one that got shot. That's um, who was in the first movie? Peck. Is. Anthony Peck. Yeah, he's yeah. he's a, like in a lot. He's of in the first movie. Is sitting in the car. Right, right. Yeah, the rookie cop, the the, the cop. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know it was him. I was watching. Yeah, it with he's my in mother. He's I'm in, like, oh, that's him. He's in pretty much all John McTiernan's movies up to a point. He had a he had, he's a, he had a brain tumor and died. Oh, did he? Yeah, I know. He passed away at some point. Um, so, now, anyway. so now he can't tell his people to shut the hell up anymore. <laughs> that's, a, that's a shame. Ricky, you want to tell his people to shut, shut the, the hell up? up. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, it was good. I liked it. Um, you know, I just don't think... It's not strong, It's not strong as strong as the first two. It might, yeah, it and might, that's, and that's like, you know, seeing it the first time, I was like, oh, great, you know, John McClane, you know, it was great. You know, you're in that kind of buzz or whatever. But, you know, subsequent viewings... And how about how it starts? Then, well, then, yeah. I'm going to say, Diary of the Avengers... Boom! So Bob that's Tyler's that's a great and, and I remember we were in the theater. We were like, "That's a way to start a movie. right." Exactly. You got my attention. And, and plus, right off the, the bomb goes off like in the middle of the song. It's not like we're going to let the song in and then you know some little some. Bullshit. Well, you're seeing you're seeing the subway entrances, right. you see all kinds of shots, aspects and then, of New York City, <laughs> <laughs> and you're seeing cars flying. Yeah. By the way, the the, the there was a. Uh, What's that? The Brinks truck or one of those trucks mm -hmm. in the first movie or the mm -hmm. second movie? Like you see that truck, like it's like an inside they're, yeah, truck. They're, the same truck from the first they're, movie they're, that with that the terrorist drove in and knocked oh, the okay, okay, whatever okay. set on the okay, side. Okay, okay. That's the, that truck is the one that blows that blows on the other car. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. That was like an inside joke. Cool. I, read, I read about that recently. <laughs> um, um, Samuel L. Jackson, a nice companion. It's I always I love him in anything. Yeah, you know. After seeing Pulp Fiction, he came right off of Pulp Fiction. He's going to fit and die hard with yeah, the engines, especially true. since they were both in Pulp Fiction, not in the same scenes or, or anything. But. Although i got to say, at some point, I love Samuel Jackson, um, but <laughs> it might be in that movie. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty talkative. You're annoying me, and you gotta be giving a uh, headache addled McLean. Well, he says every ten minutes, shut your goddamn yelling, I got a bad fucking hangover. Uh, yeah, right. But he, he's, I mean, I, I love Die Hard with a Vengeance. Um, okay, so... Die Hard. So 1995. Yeah, and we go 12... We, we jump, we go 12, 12 years, years to live for your Die Here Hard. Here comes John McClane again. Right. My first thought... Was the title of the film? I hate. Really? I, I hate. It. And it's it's um, the state motto for, for I, think, I think Massachusetts. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the new live ones. for your or live die. for your die. Okay, yeah. that's fine. It's a good build off. Or New forever. Hampshire. It might be New Hampshire. It's it's a I yeah. know it's a New England colony, yeah. a New New England state. Um, I just don't like the title. The, the, I do. The, the, the working title was Die Hard 4.0. That's what it's called overseas because it makes better sense because they don't have that state motto over there. Right. Live for your die hard doesn't make any sense outside of the U.S. Well, die hard yeah. 4.0 was, was the, for some reason I know that's even simpler, but I like it better because of, it works well, it on kind the of computer. It ties into the computer yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The resounding computer yeah. plot or whatever. That's, and see, and I, I like live for your die hard because. It works the Die Hard plot into, and plus, Live Free or Die was a slogan, you know, adapted by patriots who were who felt, you know, very, very, very important. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get my own. Thank you. Keep talking. Um, you know, you know, it was about defending your country. You know, which Gibson, you know, what's his name, uh, Timothy Oliphant, felt he was doing. You know, he felt he was. Protecting the country in a sense, you know, by what he was doing because he had went to them and said, "Here's your problems," and they ignored him, you know, as far as security or whatever. Right. So that's why I kind of like the title. Um, 
the film itself, um, I was I was glad, you know, I was I was happy when we left the theater because after waiting twelve years, I I, admit, I was scared, you know. I, it's one of those things. It's like you, it's a, a series or a character you love. You haven't seen him for a while. It's like if we had to wait twelve years for a Bond movie. You know, well, we I, went six years. years. You're apprehensive. We went six years, and then when Goldeneye well, came out, I was like, yeah. <laughs> And I wasn't disappointed. Yeah, I love Goldeneye. And I wasn't disappointed in this. I mean, I, you know, I wasn't sure. But I'll be honest. Um, when when I when I went to it, I'd already seen scenes from it. The car flipping. You know what you call the right, money the shot. The money shot. The money right, shot. Right, I love right. that. I love the way you put that. Right. Like, mom, this is the money shot. This, this is the, what's the, the money shot. The hanging off the plane at the end, yeah. and after, I mean, sliding down and all that stuff. I mean, the way it ended. I mean, there's a lot of good. Good moments in good that stuff, movie, yeah. but what was what I thought was weird, in my opinion, is just it, it it wrapped itself up into the plot so much that I just felt like there was less action in it than, the, than its predecessors. Mm -hmm. Not saying that that's a bad thing, because to defend that is that when there was an action scene, it was a it breathtaking. Was super, it, was it was a super, super action. Right. Yeah, in a sense, it felt to me he went from the reluctant hero to. The hero who's oh he was still reluctant in this. It's still reluctant, but it's it, there's a bitterness there. I think just a tinge. He doesn't want to do it. Yeah, he doesn't want to do it because he, he says somebody's got to do it. He tells he tells the but he tells the kid you know being a hero gets you gets you nothing you know you know basically but I got to do it because somebody's got to do it. So there's still the reluctancy there, but I, I don't know something about the you know I, I felt sad for him. You know that things went this way. A guy that went through all this shit should have more, <laughs> should have more of a reward than you know, than just I'm the guy that's got to do it because nobody else has to. <laughs> I don't know. You know. I love the ending though. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm like, how the hell are they gonna get out of this? And he ends up just shooting and he himself. He shoots himself to the floor. Yippee ki motherfucker! <laughs> and I'm like, that is the shit. <laughs> I hated that it was PG-13 in the theater. Oh, I didn't. I did. I hated that. I did. I didn't, I didn't give a shit. I'm one of those guys that's like, there's no swearing, there's no F-words. I don't care about that. There's no gory gunshots. It's not a Die Hard movie without that. I don't, I don't it's, a shit it's the traditional, you know. I don't but then when it came to DVD, I'm rejoicing. Yeah, hey, because they, they, oh, yeah, they threw it back <laughs> in there. So, oh, yeah. that, that shit doesn't bother me, though. You know, I'm just, I'm, I just kind of go with, you're a I am a douchebag now. <laughs> That's a lot of people. A lot of, a lot of people probably agree with you. A lot of people will agree with me, but I don't know. You know, it does, think it does a couple of dickheads. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. But, uh, you know, I mean, on, on average, would you say good series? Good series? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you, one right. thing I got to say to close this all up about Die Hard, it all, it's funny as shit. I was just thinking about this, you know. You got the first two movies that revolve around him and his wife. Yeah. Him getting his wife out of a sticky situation. Right. She leaves him by the third movie. She's completely gone and her yeah. divorced by the fourth. Right. Real nice fucking chick. <laughs> Saved her ass twice. I don't know what the hell he did to deserve it, but she divorced him anyway. Okay. Next time a terrorist takes over somewhere, he ain't gonna be there to save her, and goddamn knows it's gonna happen. Bitch. Mm -hmm.